Bible says in Luke chapter 10 verse 27, he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. Jesus, love wrapped my 
Shalom and a blessed, blessed day to you, a blessed Sunday. And I want to warmly welcome you on behalf of the worship room as you join for this time as we share God's word, as we be able to dive into God's word. And at the same time, allow nothing but, no one but the Holy Spirit to be able to minister into our hearts. So as always, I want to be able to pray with you together and ask the Holy Spirit's guidance this morning. So as we do this together, I want you to surrender your hearts, keep the Bible at hand, and I want to say that God loves you, He's with you, and may He continue to draw you close to Him. As you draw near to Him, He will draw near to you. So let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for yet another brand new day. This is yet another day that you have met. We shall rejoice and continue to be glad, trusting and believing, Father Lord, as we step forward as your servants, as your kingdom citizens, following after you, Jesus, as your disciples, to continue, Father Lord, to seek more of you, to seek all that you have in store for us. So, Father Lord, this day, as we draw close to you, Father, open the eyes of our hearts to trust and believe in all that you have in store for us. Surrendering it into your hands, believing that you will allow your Father Lord, your continual spirit to dwell in us, your spirit that dwells in our hearts, Father Lord, to rise as we surrender our entire self to you, to allow and say, let thy will be done. Let thy kingdom come down, Father Lord. Have your way in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So wonderful day today. And I want to be able to share with you from God's word is as to what he's been putting into my heart these last few days. You know, though over the over the course of a week ago, I was in the East Coast and I was spending a few days with my family. And um, it was a wonderful time to be there but we were probably the only people or more or less that were there because of all that's taking place right now and many places are empty but it was still yet another wonderful experience to be able to be there on the east coast of uh, Sri Lanka and we were on the beach and we had more or less the entire beach the sea was right before us and we were on the beach and we had it all to ourselves but there wasn't a single moment that I was not able to spend time with God. I was be able to walk on that beach. I was able to just talk to God. I was able to just be in that silence. You know, sometimes when the beaches are packed with people, it's it's wonderful. But I wouldn't have been able to spend as much time as I did. And it was a wonderful time. But as I was walking on that beach, the Lord was really showing me so much even with the seas and the seas were rough because this is off season and um, it's uh, for those that go diving for those that truly are into water sports and see see, uh, the deep sea uh, to be able to dive and swim the sea was pretty rough and the waves were crashing in on the beach and even as I was walking on that beach the Lord was really speaking to me and speaking to my heart and I want to be able to share with you from God's word and this is what he gave me from Psalm 89 chapter 9 the book of Psalm 89 um, chapter 89 verse 9 Let us be able to read that together. It says, You rule the swelling of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. Hallelujah. And I titled this very likely to say, You rule the raging seas. When its waves rise, you still them. He calms the raging sea. See, I want to be able to share with you and say the term sea is used symbolically in the Bible to represent the following things extension of the gospel it says they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea hallelujah in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 9 
See, the ocean is the beginning of life on earth and it symbolizes formlessness, the unfathomable and chaos. The oceans can also be seen as a symbol of stability as it can exist largely unchanged. It hasn't changed from the very beginning for centuries. The ocean contents may have changed with regard to much that is happening and taking place uh, with natural as well as unnatural destruction and disasters but the sea has not changed see God's word from the very beginning has been the very same for unlike what we have in printed matter in this very word that we read the spoken word of God for in the beginning God spoke the word he did not read the word of something that was written the word was always in existence See, unlike me having an idea before I write it down, before I pen it down to be documented, for God the word was and is and forever will be. Later to guide us through instructions, he used us, he used man to document it down over the centuries, over the, over the course of time, not as just a historical account, but from the beginning wanted to show us that through God who was always stable and is always able to be everything he was and is and will always be. He wanted to show us his creation whom we have to be dependent on to look for stability rather than turn our eyes upon everything else to be independent that which is unstable never knowing when it would fall apart see unlike with everything else that does not come with a foolproof guarantee with God all things are possible amen and through him he makes all things work together for our good for he set the tone he set the pace he set the very direction just like he set the very direction of the waves to be. I was walking on that beach and I was seeing these waves, wave after wave coming in and it's amazing to witness it. I actually videoed some of those in clips to see that each wave is different, each wave crashing in. It's just amazing to see and to witness in silence the very pace at which it moves and to this day we witness his creation right before our eyes and I was just thinking wow in I was in awe and it had not changed he truly is marvelous magnificent what a mighty God we serve truly faithful in every way see as we witness throughout scripture God has used his very word to interpret to us no one else God has used to interpret it to us through his word when we go through life's journey he has always been available to show us that he is the one who is able to make all things stable if we only put our trust in him and him alone God was always showing us that he is who he always said he would be never to change unlike human beings when we see the oceans rise when we see the waves coming, crashing in, we see in the Bible just like some of us, some or many of us would go into, I would say, panic mode, a state of helplessness, like the very disciples who left in those, it's, it's recorded in the Bible, it says, even the very disciples who left it all behind to follow Jesus, to follow him, started to panic after putting their whole trust in him yet Jesus kept reminding them to keep their trust in him at times even if it sounded harsh to the emotions of those that followed him said ye of little faith and is a reminder to us that he is God he is in control he is forever in control not even for a moment to take our eyes off him. The very story, just like Peter, 
were to when he walked on water, not to take our eyes off him on any account. See, Jesus walking on water, the very story documented in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 31, says, Peter asks Jesus that upon command, he will come out onto the water. See, when Peter stepped out of that boat, it's like many of us boldly sometimes, you know, we step forward by faith, yet the moment things get rough in our lives, we give up, we give up hope. Looking around ourselves to get engulfed like Peter did and start to sink. Yes, Jesus will come to our rescue, but he wants us to start to stand by faith, not by sight, to stand on solid ground and not what is not by sight, what is not stable. He is and forever will be solid ground for us to stand on, for he is God Almighty. You need to understand that he will always show us that just like he calms the magnificent, mightiest of waves in the ocean. In Psalm 89 it says, You rule the swelling of the sea when its waves rise, you still them. Verse 9 of Psalm 89. God shows us that he is always in control. I want to encourage you, we need to know always when the storms of our lives rise, whom to trust and spend time in. Who do we spend our trust on? If He truly is God of our lives and no other, our very mouths need to be start to declare no matter what, no matter who else surrounds us, never share opinions. I want to encourage you today as part of the body of Christ never share opinions that is not based on what God's Word says. For His Word is not based on our emotions. Did you know that? His Word was never based on human feelings. God's Word was settled before we were created. God's Word is solid. It is truth. It is everything it says it is. And you, you and I can never change it, no matter what. God's word is not based on feelings and emotions and state of helplessness, but it is based on solid ground, a firm foundation. But we need to believe that, because if we do not believe it, if our minds even right now is going through this, oh, I've heard it all before, you have already are in a rebellious state to receive what God's word says. When I always share, I don't share my opinions. My opinions matter not if it does not balance itself with God's word. We need to realize this. In Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 22, the book of Jeremiah, Do you not fear me, declares the Lord? Do you not tremble in my presence? For I have placed the sand as a boundary for the sea. It's an eternal decree so it cannot cross over it. See, though the waves toss, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot cross over it. Isn't that amazing? If you think about it, the very, the beach, the sand, the waves come crashing in, but it, that's it. It cannot go beyond. We need to know what God said shall always be. So in the days, no matter how unstable it may seem around us, I encourage you from God's word, not my opinions, not my feelings, not my experiences, but God's word. Trust in the Lord your God. Trust in Him at all times. Hallelujah. See, in the last days, there will be signs in the sun and the moon and stars and on the earth dismay among nations in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. It says in Luke chapter 21 verse 25. Let's read that again. In the last days, there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars 
and on the earth dismay among nations in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves my encouragement is trust in the Lord your God trust in God the Almighty who was and is and is to come and may his Holy Spirit be our constant guide to show us each day whom to keep our total dependency on whom to keep our trust and hope in to know he calms every raging sea around our lives he carries us on the palms of his hand the Bible says and it's not just because the Bible says if we don't believe it no matter what the Bible says matters not if we start to take little extracts just to suit our needs it'll not come to pass we need to know everything the Bible says is for our lives not just the good little things hallelujah he healed all our infirmities I encourage you and remind you constantly what his word says trust in him and him alone and no other let's believe in his word and prepare ourselves always be ever ready knowing that he God will never abandon us he will never leave us nor forsake us the Bible says always reminding ourselves just like his word is there to remind us when we read it if we allow someone else to read it on our behalf and we just be listeners and not doers of what the word says what hope is there it's like you're trying to live someone else's life I always tell people especially in the body of Christ I tell them who are you following <laughs> the other day when I was actually reading the word the Lord was giving me are you a follower of me Jesus always asks me this so I remind myself and I wanted to share this are we followers of Christ or are we followers of the body of Christ think about that are we follower of Christ or are we followers of the body of Christ let that dwell in and sink I always told myself father when you sent Jesus and when Jesus came down and he became our shepherd the only shepherd and he left his Holy Spirit to follow after him to seek after him the Holy Spirit will be our guide I said Jesus you are my shepherd you are I'm a disciple of Christ I don't say I'm a disciple of the body of Christ no I don't know where you get this stuff from God's love for his people is like the ocean you can see the beginning but it has no end it's unconditional see if we start following human beings and followers of human beings it's conditional <laughs> when things don't go according to another's this thing they switch off they switch on Jesus is not like that he is not man who should lie if he says something he will but we need to know we have to have the reverent fear of the Lord which most in the body of Christ has lost today I want to tell you he is God if he is God we need to we need to tr not treat him like God we need to understand he is God his love is unconditional it's agape love which humanly if we try to think we can never understand because we're constantly rooting to connect to God in human feelings you, you cannot connect to God with human feelings God's love for his people is like the ocean you can see the beginning but it has no end it's unconditional it's eternal my encouragement is let us put our hope in him as as we read this very psalm to end this time and I want to tell that to you again that's something that the Holy Spirit really put into my heart to say are we followers of Christ or are we followers of the body of Christ I am a follower of Christ and that's where the buck stops that is why I could always tune my ear to his word and no other word I'd have discernment to know if someone else is sharing God's word I'll receive it and I'll be encouraged and I'll be able to even bless them and say praise the Lord thank you for sharing that it it moved me it touched me but praise the Lord 
But if I listen to something and that is opinionated and there's debates and all sorts of things, sometimes I don't even bother to argue. I will raise arguments most of the time, but otherwise I'll just get up and I will just walk away. My encouragement is let us put our hope in him as we read this psalm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to Psalm 36 verses 5 to 7 it says Your unfailing love O Lord is as vast as the heavens Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains Your justice like the ocean depths You care for people and animals alike O Lord How precious is your unfailing love oh god all humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings hallelujah hallelujah so father once again we thank you we thank you father for all that you are we thank you for all that you do constantly reminding us of your love your unfailing love and we want to constantly follow after you father open the eyes of our hearts to see things as you see them to be able to open the ears father so that we will tune to the frequencies of the heavenlies constantly guarding our hearts guarding ourselves to know in discernment to know your voice hallelujah See, we choose to transform our minds and hearts not to keep going back to our old self but transform us from the inside out to depend constantly on him wanting all of him all that he has in store to allow that will of his to unveil over this earth through us we know that there will be times that god will calm the storms around us and at times he will allow those waves to rise but he will bring calmness upon us wanting us to depend on him so when storms rise around you and i there is nothing more reliable than we should depend on than God's word. Hallelujah. His kingdom come, his will be done. My encouragement is trust in the Lord your God. Trust in his voice. I love his holy spirit to daily, daily, daily continually be our guide. May his word always fill our hearts. May we constantly know that his love is unconditional we see as those waves come in we see the beginning but we cannot see it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on he does not switch off he does not ignore we connect to that ignoring through ignorance because when we have failure in relationship with human beings we're trying to relate to a god who is almighty and we're trying to have that relationship horizontal relationship with vertical we cannot do that you need to switch off horizontally and realign to connect vertically it is when we connect vertically we will start to love one another through his love no other love no other love it is that agape love that we need to connect to to redirect ourselves to come back to our first love i always tell people my first and only love is god and through that love even with the difficult moments even with the most difficult situations even with the most difficult of people see as god sees trust in the lord your god and my encouragement to you today and through this week is surrender your hearts to him it is never too late god will never abandon you 
He will not forsake you. He is with his arms wide open, waiting for you to come to him. So I leave that with you and may you have a blessed week. God bless you and may his shalom peace be upon you and your household, your family and everything that you put your hand into. May his favor and grace surround you. And may the grace and favor of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit rest and abide as you trust in him and walk with him, allowing him to lead the way. May God bless you and until we meet again, Shalom and God bless.